Hello, Humane Marketers. Sarah Znakrocha here. Welcome to another episode of the Humane Marketing Podcast, a place to be for the generation of marketers who cares. This is the show where we talk about marketing your business in a way that feels good to you, is aligned with your values, and also resonates more with your conscious customers because it's not pushy, ethical, and also beautiful. So if you're a regular here, you know that I'm organizing the conversations around the seven P's of humane marketing. And if you're new here and this is your first time, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. You may want to download your one-page marketing plan with the seven P's of humane marketing in the form of a mandala at humane.marketing forward slash one page, the number one and page. So again, humane.marketing forward slash one page. And with that, with no further ado, let's dive into today's conversation. Hi, Tammy. So good to have you on the podcast today. Great to be with you. Wonderful. You are like one of these voices that I could listen to all day long. You have this just like, I don't know, it's some it like it's anchored and it's calm. And it's just like, oh, it feels so good when I hear your voice. Do you ever get that? Like, do, this, do other people tell you that? Well, I'm glad you like it. Not all people respond positively. I have received uh, mail that says things like, sounds like you work at a mortuary or... <laughs> Have you smoked too much hash before you start speaking? So there's, you know, there's a full spectrum of responses, okay. mm. but I also enjoy your voice, Sarah. Mm, it's you. a sweet and gentle, so it's wonderful. Yeah. We like each other's voices. What Yay. a great way to start. Yeah. And, and it's funny because just on my walk today, I heard on another podcast that I think there's a book about it, that this, uh, the voice contains the soul of the person. And I... I tend to agree with that. There's a lot of things that you can probably tell out of someone's voice. So it's interesting. Sure. Especially well, you in know, this podcasting day and age. Sure. Where, you know, we really find like we get to know someone by just listening to them. Sure. And I think some people are more sensitive and yeah. have that kind of voice intuition mm -hmm. where you can really feel and sense a lot of someone's presence from their voice. Some people are really sensitive to that. It sounds like you're one of those people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I identify as an HSP, so maybe that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're not here to talk about voice or voice coaching or anything like that. I'd like to start in 1985 because that's when you started your your business. Your company sounds true, and I'm just kind of like blown away by by that idea that you started that back in the day and already then it had to do with spirituality. And so I'm curious whether back then, and you can talk, you know, tell us about the story a bit, but the question is like, if back then already, you kind of had the feeling sometimes that you were ahead of your age, like, like, like did this feel like you are going against the grain or were you, was there places where you just walked in and you were welcomed with open arms? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I wasn't really looking so much at the outer landscape at that point in my life. I was just 21 years of age mm -hmm. and I was deeply connected with my inner process, which was a process that had a lot of desperation and anguish that was mm -hmm. fueling it. Mm -hmm. And the desperation and anguish came from having dropped out of college, even though I loved learning. I, that, that's my nature is to learn, 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 but there was something about the academic environment. It wasn't the kind of learning that was uh, vital to me. The kind of learning that was vital to me had to do with direct experience and discovery and the inner journey of knowing what happens when we die? Is there any way to discover that? And how could I know in my own experience? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of existential foment inside of me that I was in touch with that brought me out of academia and brought me into, okay, is there a way for me to actually use this love of learning to 
make a contribution in the lives of other people and possibly even have a job. So that was kind of what was going on inside of me. And there was no ready-made seat at the table. This was far before the whole idea of mindfulness and meditation was mm -hmm. popular. But I was coming from the inside, wanting to make a contribution using this love of learning that is so intrinsic to me. And was it always, because now you talk a lot about, you know, spirituality in life and work. I think that is, when I look at some other spiritual teachers, that is how I see you differently, that you have this focus also on the professional lives that we all, uh, or most of us lead. Uh, was that always a priority or was it first like, you know, let me get to know myself and, and let, let me kind of sure. spread the word about that first? Sure. Well, I never had an active interest in business as a mm -hmm. young person. Mm -hmm. I was interested in something, you know, I thought spiritual wisdom, social change and art, something like that altogether. Business I saw as some other kind of thing. Right. But yet I quickly discovered that I am a team player. I like working with other people and that as a solo operator, I could only get so much done. I could only have so much impact. I could only mm -hmm. reach so many people. And I wanted to have a, a greater reach. And so before you knew it, I was working with the team. And before you knew it, that team grew. And then it became really important to me that the products and the process of our work were coherent, that the process would reflect the values that were embedded in the products. And so before you knew it, there I was doing a lot of reflection and then writing and speaking about the whole topic of, well, okay, how do we make the workplace a congruent environment with the greatest spiritual principles of you know the the mystics of all time who weren't applying their writing and thinking to a for-profit business but we can and we must if we're going to feel whole inside ourselves as sounds true as an operation so that's kind of how it evolved so if you compare then or even you know the 90s to today um do you see more readiness in the business world to look at these topics and work with these topics? Oh and my, do you see for that? sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay. You know, back in the beginning, I was, I was on my own, you know, I was talking to myself <laughs> and what, I mean, that was, it was, you know, th th there was not a lot of interest at mm -hmm. all. In fact, I remember talking to various people in business. I remember one person and he said, oh my God, it's like you have five green heads as you're describing. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have five green heads. I just have one kind of, you know. But I mean, it was so foreign to most mm -hmm. people. The whole notion of conscious capitalism, mm -hmm. B Corps, this, was not, this wasn't part of the landscape. Now I feel that there's a whole movement happening worldwide where people are saying, you know, we have to do business differently. We have to address social problems through our business. Our business has to be a force that brings people up in our, the people who work with us, our communities, et cetera. So I feel part of a movement now, and that's wonderful. Yeah, and you must be thinking, finally, you're waking up to this. I've been, you know, doing this for ages. Yeah, it's just... well, you know, it's it's interesting. The Inner MBA is a program that Sounds True has produced in partnership with LinkedIn and Wisdom 2.0. And when we had our first graduating class, Lynn Twist came to gave the commencement speech, and Lynn Twist is the founder of the Soul of Money Institute, and here I'm getting to my point, she talked about how 45 years ago, so I started Sounds True 36 and a half years ago, but 45 years ago, she heard a speech by Buckminster Fuller, who said, 50 years from now, we will see all of the institutions of our world starting to reflect the deep knowing of interdependence mm -hmm. that's just coming into our conscious awareness now. But it's going to take 50 years before that starts 
revolutionizing and changing the structures, the mm -hmm. societal structures, the structures of education and politics and business that have been created, that have been built on a different paradigm, a paradigm of the separate individual mm -hmm. that, you know, leader trying to get their, you know, whatever financial reward, who's not tuned and not creating from a deep knowing of our interdependence. And I think that early spiritual insight that I had, that was part of the you know very beginning of my life in, in my 20s, I knew that another person was an aspect of my greater self, that the people I was working with, the customers, the authors, that we were all part of this web of interdependencies, really you could call it a web of being. And I wanted our business to reflect the honoring of that web. Now I think that knowing, that knowing of our interdependence is something that many, many, many people are in touch with and can articulate and they want to design social structures, business organizations that are true to it, that reflect those values that honor our interdependence. It feels really good to hear that and, and kind of also this knowing that, you know, it was always meant to be maybe that we had to go through this evolution and how these things often go break down in order to break through and build from you know scratch at the same time it feels like there's a lot of work ahead of us still <laughs> like we're in sure. the middle of the change oh yeah oh yeah and no guarantee that as a species mm -hmm. we'll come out the other side successful no guarantee at all and yet what great work to be doing together how awesome let's go yeah, what else, what other choice do we have? This is there's only way one way forward, right? So I I'm featuring this chat under my seven Ps of humane marketing. When I looked at marketing and the seven Ps, I kind of reinvented them. And the second P of that humane marketing mandala stands for personal power. And so I, and that for us has a lot to do with the inner work. And I know, you know, that that's a big focus for you as well. And, and we talked a, a bit about the evolution of business, but I'm curious, you strike me as the person who kind of always knew, you know, who you are and what your, what your values are, but I'm sure as a 21 year old, you know, 20 years later or even more now, if there has been some evolution sure. for you as well. So, well, just to share the Tammy evolution. Sure. Well, knowing who you are, what your values are, what's needed, what's wanted now, in my experience, that is always a fresh discovery. It's not like, oh, check the box. I found my purpose. We're done. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way mm -hmm. in my life. In my life, there's always a new upflow, a new arising, a new asking of what's next? What's now? What's needed now? What's needed now for me? What I was doing previously, as fulfilling as that was, that was then. <laughs> that was then. Something different is needed now. And can I be in dialogue and responsive to that? So for me, this notion of personal power, it comes from being authentically in touch with what is emerging deep in our own bodily knowing, bodily experience, deep in our soul. And that soul is communicating in present time with new instructions all the time. And, you know, it's not, it's not always easy. It's not always like, oh yeah, I got this. It's like, oh wow, this is unknown. Never been here before. Huh, I'm gonna have to really slow down and listen and see what's next. And I think what's new is that we're making this a priority in the business context, where before, you know, some people were on a spiritual path, but that had nothing to do with business. Like we, we weren't addressing any of that in the business context. So why, why now? Why is it so important for leaders to also yeah. do this inner work? 
Well, I think the whole notion that there are all these different me's, like there's the me who's the business me, and then there's the me who sits on my cushion, who's the spiritual me, <laughs> and then there's the me who, you know, I mean, of course, there are different aspects of ourself, but in my experience, I want to be a whole unified person. I don't put a mask on to go to work. I'm not putting a mask on to have this conversation with you. And I think what has evolved is this whole notion that there's a price we need to pay. And the price we have to pay is that of putting on some costume that isn't who we really are mm -hmm. in order to be successful at work. No, people are discarding that. I want to be one integrated self who is authentic. And I think people are discarding that because it doesn't work for us at an inner level. And I also think other people are like, hey, knock, knock, I'd like to know the real you. Who's the real you? I want to relate authentic person to authentic person. I know one of our core values at Sounds True is actually authentic connection. Mm -hmm. We value that. And you can't have authentic connection, you know, mask to mask. You have to have it heart to heart. And I think there's a longing for that because it's so fulfilling to work with other people and have authentic connection be how you're doing the work together. And of course, our customers, customers who are on the spiritual journey, who are on this uh, journey of deep well-being, they want us as a company to connect authentically with them. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be just like sold something from the outside. They want to know why from our hearts does this creation matter? So we have to be able to articulate that. And you can't articulate that if you're not in your authenticity, connecting to the authentic journey and needs of your customer. Yeah. Yeah. The mask has a whole, you know, really important meaning for, for my listeners as well, because I actually shared the journey of taking off my own mask, having grown up in this online marketing world where pretty much anybody, everybody wears a mask. And so I, you know, grew up thinking that's what you do <laughs> and you show up with a mask. And so part of that meant, you know, my uh, hippie upbringing story. No, that doesn't belong here. That's not, you know, I'm not going to share that anywhere. And so taking off the mask feels just like, like you say, so liberating. Um, the other thing I want to mention is this word authentic authenticity that, you know, it's a great word. But unfortunately, if we don't really understand it, it's just one of these words that we're using together with vulnerability that just kind of become almost like a marketing thing. And so I think what you explained is like, yes, authenticity. And I just want to highlight again, also this inner work, that's actually what brings you to the authenticity, right? Because sure. Well, let, yeah, well, let's talk about let's talk about it for a moment, because of course, yeah. authenticity, you know, any word can get destroyed by the culture, exactly. when it gets used too much to mean so many different things, at right. so many different levels. But let's go for a different word for a moment, which is genuineness. Mm -hmm. I really like that word being genuine. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's just a word, but what's underneath it? And I think what's underneath it, and this gets to the point of vulnerability too, is first of all, sharing your bodily knowing. So you can't, first of all, share your bodily knowing unless you're in touch with it. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you have to be able to be in touch with what's actually going on. How are you feeling right now? Really, really? not like oh this is what i think sarah wants to hear or this is this is the truth of how i'm feeling so first of all you have to be in touch with your bottle knowing and that means in touch with your emotions mm -hmm. so because your emotions are showing up in your body and so is it okay to say you know i feel really sad about that or i feel really vulnerable because there's a sense of loss for me right now going on in my life. And, you know, for example, just to share, you were talking about like personal power and purpose. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, I'm in a transitional period actually in my life. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? You know, you've accomplished so much. It should be like pristine and done. No. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. 
because I think there becomes this recognition, and I think this is a really deep point, that all of our experience is sacred, all of it, even the hard experiences. So it's not just this, you know, terrific accomplishment, achiever, business self. No, it's everything we're going through is a sacred uprising in our experience. And then when we know that, we're making space for that in other people, for their genuine journey. So this is all um, so important to me because it brings forth our human wholeness at work. We're not just these, you know, winners all the time. That's not who we are as people. We're, we're whole people with complex inner lives. And so it gets more into like what's really going on with people underneath that term, you know, authenticity. Now, the interesting thing is we can smell it out in each other. We can smell it. We can now more than it. ever. You know? yep. If we weren't able before, now we definitely are. Yes. We can sense it. We can sense people who are posing. Mm -hmm. You know, they're posing. They're using authenticity as part of their, you know, whatever. That's different than meeting a real person with all of their messy blood, guts, and glory right there in front of you. And you can feel it. So how does that translate into marketing? Because I know you, you, you know, as part of the inner MBA, you have this program called Conscious Marketing. And, and here we're on the Humane Marketing Podcast. So it's really important to me also to kind of talk about these things in, in marketing. Sure. So where would sure. you say is the parallel here? Sure. Well, one of the big insights for me related to marketing had to do when I had an old mindset that was broken open. And the mindset I had was you make the product over here and then you market it. Mm -hmm. So we make these great teaching programs and mm -hmm. then we have to market them. Mm -hmm. So what the insight was that, oh, actually take all of that teaching and put it into the communication about what the product is. There's one thing going on here which is you are sharing these teachings with the world. What you care the most about, you are sharing with other people. You're baking it into the product and you're baking it into how you talk about the product. Oh my God, it's not a separate thing. And then I got really excited and I was like, oh, this is simply about communicating teachings in a different way than the way they're encoded in the program itself. It's about talking about it. And then it's like, oh, okay, I want to share what's really most meaningful to me. Why did I make this program in the first place? There was a deep motivation behind it. Talk about- Yeah, we talk a lot about worldview over here. So so really making your worldview part of your marketing. And, and you know, for you, that means a, a world where spirituality and business, you know, go hand in hand. And, and for others, their worldview is- you know, has to do with climate crisis or whatever it is, bring that, bring more of that, that vision and that passion into your marketing. I think that's what, what, yeah, makes it authentic again, that word, but, but that's where it, you can tell that it's real. Another thing that I often say is that we need more explanations, like, in, because marketing has gotten a bad rap. So we need to actually be extra careful to explain everything we do. So in, uh, as an example, if you are doing a, you know, a one day of sale or something like that, well, explain why the real reasoning and, and uh, you know, a lot of explanation, I think, in order to regain that trust that mm -hmm. probably we've lost in marketing. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing to say is, you know, I, so I like to write. And as someone who likes to write, I can sometimes notice when I'm writing and something's not quite working, I'll say to myself, go deeper, Tammy. What is it you actually need to say right now? Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the soul force behind this thing? 
tell more of the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lay it out more like you're on the surface right now. You're on the surface. Go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. And I notice that when I write and it really hits, it's because I've come right. I've been willing to share what's really that deep truth inside of myself. So I would say the same thing about marketing and also this notion of authenticity, that there are these levels. And it's, so can you peel off that level? Can you peel off the other level? Peel. What is actually that thing way deep inside of you? That's the actual underneath truth. Say that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's another thing I kind of had on my bullet point list is, is the word truth, because it's in your, you know, in your company name. So that must be like, your favorite word and your kind of like your leading value so so tell us how that looks like in your company and your marketing and kind of how you sure. see it evolve in the business world as well sure well you know just like i was saying you can kind of sniff out whether someone's like how real are they really like you can kind of feel it i think it's also when someone's speaking you can kind of sniff out, are they, are they telling me the truth right now? Like what's going on? What's, what's really happening here? And I think one of the things I noticed is that when people come forward with what's deeply true for them, I have a relaxation. I feel relaxed. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. That's what's going on here. Cause I don't have to figure it out. Yeah. I don't have to be like, what's really happening? Like, why are they really, you know, la, 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 just tell me. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a great uh, gift to your customers. And in that sense, you could say it's like talking to your partners. That's the interdependent whole. You're sharing with another part of yourself what's really going on here, why you're really doing it. So I don't, I don't know if that helps, but I, I, you know, the name of Sounds True is Sounds True because we talked about at the beginning of our conversation about being auditorially sensitive. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I'm very sensitive to the sound of when someone is speaking, if they're speaking the truth and that I experience it like music. It's so beautiful to me. I just want to listen to it all day long. And I think you can feel that too in marketing materials. You can just sense it. You're like, oh, they're not giving, it's not a snow job here. They're just speaking they're directly. Yeah, direct. Me into anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of my walks in nature. You just know what you see is what what's true. You know, there's nothing to change. Your mind gets a break because it doesn't have to try to figure out what's not working and what needs fixing. No, it's all just perfect as it is. And, and it's, true the way you know nature is always <laughs> true and and right so yeah that's what comes up for me yeah you know sarah what i'm reflecting on as we're talking kind of because once again it's about this willingness to listen and deeper and deeper levels to things is that if we're not comfortable making money hi i enjoy making money when I make money, it allows me to pay my staff really well. It allows me to live an abundant and beautiful lifestyle that's enriched with beauty and opportunities and a sense of freedom. It allows me to reinvest in the growth of our company and we can reach more people and be more expansive. I enjoy and need, sounds true, to be a company that makes money. If you're not comfortable with that in your business, then you can't also be comfortable communicating with the values of your products because you're always doing this dance around a weird relationship with money. So I would say one thing is get really clear about having a healthy relationship with money where you enjoy and need to make it, but that doesn't make you greedy. It doesn't mean you're not deeply interested in seeing everyone rise. And in fact, you're baking into your organization ways that you can either uh, have a nonprofit arm like we do at Sounds True, 
or other ways that you're giving back to the community and supporting people who don't have the financial resources to perhaps access your products. I think of one of the CEOs who's part of the inner MBA who started Bombas Socks. For every pair of socks they sell, they give one to a homeless person. They've given away millions of pairs of socks. It was part of his original inspiration. And so he's able to talk about buying Bombas socks and giving socks to homeless people all at the same time. And he can be in his heart around it mm -hmm. because he's congruent deep inside about what they're trying to do with the business and how those sales promote a, a world where we're all rising together and where the money from the business is going. So I think we have to clear that all up so we can be transparent about it. Yeah, I find it interesting that you bring up the, the, the topic of money because it's obviously a sensitive topic to, you know, I know for my listeners, for myself, and I, you know, there's inner work in, included in that journey with that, with money and in, in my book, Selling Like We're Human, it is, you know, the first step to have a real conversation with your money and money story so that you can relax and then really just have a human conversation around investing in your services and not get all tensed up with the minute the money comes into the into the game so 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 essential and and you're right and and i think what what you see unfortunately still in some of the business stuff is is the individualism where where it's like, yeah, we need to make more money and become millionaires and blah, blah, blah. But what's missing there is, is the third win, which is the collective and the planet, right? And, and you're clearly saying, well, no, it has to, if we make more money first, yes, we need to be in abundance ourselves so that we can support ourselves. But then let's, like you say, right? Right. Rise is a rise or raise together. Rise together, all of us, and 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 we can only do that if we first look after ourselves. Yeah. So I think it's really important for people to put into their original product design mm -hmm. how the the funds raised are going to be of benefit to other people who don't have access to the same financial resources. And if you put that in in the beginning, then you can stand in what you're doing in, in a certain kind of way mm -hmm. and stand in the generosity of what you're doing as you market your products. Would you also say that, of course, that makes the founder or the owner uh, feel good. Would you also say, given the evolution of business, that that is going to be a key differentiator for the customers, meaning, you know, the Gen Z. Sure. But I think the key is you can't just do it. You can't just do anything because you think, oh, this is now going to appeal to cut. You have to be real about it. Like give some real money away from your <laughs> profits, like actually do it, yeah. not just some kind of performative thing. I, I so anything, it. anything can become performative. And, you know, the good news is that people sniff it out, which is a theme that we've been talking about in this conversation. And so it, it, it has to be because actually that's something you value. It matters to you because it is part of that realization. It's a realization. It's not negotiable. It's not a strategy. If it's a strategy, it's weak. If it's because you really want this group of people who are connected to what you do to benefit from your work and otherwise they wouldn't have access and it's really alive for you then it will also be alive for your customers and they'll sense it yeah yeah and and as a leader of a bigger business of course maybe the founder has to look at these values but then the whole team i'm sure your whole team is aligned with all of that because that's Again, it, it works from the inside out, right? Yeah. Mm. And it's important, you mentioned it's important to potentially Gen Z customers. It's really important to employees. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, here in the United States, at this point in the pandemic, we're going through something people are calling the great resignation, yeah. where so many people are leaving organizational life and saying, yeah, it's just not worth it. No. I think I'm just going to go off on my own and do something or other. There's no way I'm going to keep working for this organization, you know, no. And so your organization has to be doing something truly meaningful, mm -hmm. truly meaningful for people to say, yeah, I want to give you my time and energy at this point. And I think it's actually also the employees who will hold the company or the management accountable that uh, it's the truth and that they're actually doing it and implementing and measuring, you know, what, whatever they're saying so that they're actually walking their talk. So, yeah, so good. Wow. Tell us more about Sound True and the Inner MBA and where people can listen to your amazing podcast and find out more about you. Sure. Well, come check us out at soundstrue.com. All of our resources are there. Our Inner MBA program is a nine-month program. We're in our second cohort. The next cohort won't start until September of 2022. But we also have a generous scholarship program that's part of the Inner MBA because our goal is to make training of inner development connecting with that soul force and having it be imbued throughout every aspect of our business to make that kind of training as widely accessible as possible. So yeah, come check us out at soundstrue.com. Thank you. I have two more questions if you may. Sure. Yeah. Um, where do you see and how do you see business evolve over the next decade? Hmm. Well, that's a big question. I think that the awareness of climate change as a business issue is something that we're starting to hear many brilliant entrepreneurs address. And thank goodness, because I'm not convinced that we'll have enough solutions fast enough from political action, mm -hmm. but from creative entrepreneurs who are motivated to solve all kinds of problems and who are brilliant at it, let's go. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're gonna see a lot more of investment dollars and a lot more creative entrepreneurs looking to solve climate change from all kinds of things, whether it's carbon architecture or you know innovations that work with different kinds of algae. I don't know, I think there's so many opportunities there. So that's one thing. Uh, I also think this whole notion that business is a place where we get to grow and evolve as human beings and where we must grow and evolve, that business is an incubator for the deep human journey of adult development. Adult development meaning we're learning all kinds of greater skills than we learned in our original college training about emotional intelligence, about deep listening skills, all of this. I think business will be seen as an incubator for the highest levels of adult development. So I also think we're going to experience that. I think that more and more businesses will understand that we're living in an age of transparency, and that means that you can't hide stuff, so don't don't do things you need to hide because you can't. So I think that's also gonna become more and more apparent. I also think what you're working on, which is authenticity and marketing, whatever language, I think people are just so sick of being sold anything. They don't want it anymore, I'm done. You know, I, I remember at one point I was uh, talking to a mentor I work with and I was talking about a presentation and how I wished I had said something slightly better, that I wasn't as clear as I could have been. And she said to me, Tammy, people don't need perfection right now. You know what they, they just need people to be real. Yeah. Like, were you real? And I was like, oh, yeah, I was actually. And I was like, I can do that every day. I can do that every <laughs> That's time. That's actually easy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not that hard. I was like, perfect, it's hard. She's like, people don't need perfect. They're yeah. done with it. All the polish, all the everything. Mm -hmm. So I also think there's a hunger. There's just a hunger for the type of genuine presentation. Mm -hmm. I love I love everything you said, and I can't wait for that day. I think the only thing I would add is is community and 
more partnerships, companies not working in silos, but working together, open source, sharing. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's the opposite of individualistic capitalism, right? So. Yep. That's a great thing to add. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I said I had two questions. So the last question is, what are you grateful for today or this week? Tim? Oh, Well, I immediately see my family. So I see my wife, Julie, and our two furry children, Raspberry and Bula. <laughs> and then I feel grateful. I see the faces of many of the people I work with, That Sounds True, and many of the authors that I've been in conversation with recently. So I feel a lot of gratitude for that. But quite honestly, I uh, also felt a sense of gratitude for feel an inner feeling of goodness and purity that I can sense inside myself. And it's not like it's my goodness or my, but like that that's part of the essence of who we are as humans, that we have this opportunity to connect with something inside, inside our hearts that's good and pure. Mm. Wonderful. I can't thank you enough for being a guest on the Humane Marketing Podcast. It's been an absolute delight. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for all your good work and your sincerity. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching and being part of a generation of marketers who cares for yourself, for your clients, and for the planet. We really are change makers before we are marketers. So go ahead, be the change you want to see in the world. And I hope to see you again next week. Take care.